Growing up in South Whidbey Island, Washington, Mark Sargent began his life's career playing computer games professionally in Boulder, Colorado. From there, he spent the next 20 years training people in proprietary software, and in 2014, he looked into what would be no doubt the most ridiculous conspiracy ever called Flat Earth Theory. And so he began extensive research into this theory, and he discovered that it would not be so laughable after all, and he was about to find out why. Before all of this, he believed that he had seen the world with rose-colored glasses on. The media was to be trusted, right? Right? The government couldn't lie. They could only have our best interests at heart. Right? Right? He would only spend the rest of his life asking the question, Where am I? But this is really a bad question. After all, the government doesn't know. So how can you explain to someone else where you are if you can't even explain it to yourself? Now, in early 2015, he released a series of YouTube videos called Flat Earth Clues, which delves into the possibility of our human civilization actually being inside of a quote-unquote Truman Show, like enclosed system. This is how it's been hidden from the public since 1956. Come join in on all the questions today as our threads are open for all your questions and more. And all of your questions will be responded to during our live show. Humanist Story. This in Live presents Mark Sargent and Flat Earth Theories. All right, you're listening to Humanist Story Live. I've got uh, Mark Sargent here with us in, on, uh, on the air. Um, he's going to talk about a very unique and interesting uh theory that he has about our planet and uh we are all <laughs> really eager to kind of listen in and see what he has to say um hey mark are you there buddy hey brian How thanks for having buddy good i'm doing pretty thanks well in here. yeah okay you know i have to ask what brought you from programming and video games to this flat earth theory uh, honestly, it, it started out just as a uh, kind of delving into conspiracies off and on for a number of years, and this was the last book on the shelf, quite literally, which was, I, I never looked at it like like most people don't. Even if you're into the, the most fringe conspiracy theories you can think of, no one looks at this because it's ridiculous, it's ludicrous, it's uh, it's madness. Now, why, why would you ever look at Flat Earth? We, we solved that thing 500 years ago, right? And finally one day, regrettably, uh, last, last fall, I looked at it. And I thought, you know, there was a German guy that made a, a video about the airplane flights in the Southern Hemisphere and how they didn't look right, and, and it pointed at, at that maybe the, the globe model was wrong. And I go, yeah, yeah, that, whatever, that's pretty interesting, but I didn't care. I considered myself a, a fairly good problem solver, so I thought I could just get through this. And then, you know, say I, could, say I actually looked at every conspiracy. And then I looked at uh, Matt Boylan's videos on YouTube, uh, one is specifically, and he, he actually... Um, trademarked uh the nasa channel uh, on on youtube where he said that when he was 25 he was told at a high level nasa party that yeah gps system has a real problem in the southern hemisphere because the world is actually flat and it was how he told the story which kind of intrigued me you know he was dead sober his girlfriend was interviewing him and i said wow that is a great story you know made for twilight zone tv movie type thing but i tried to debunk it and i said i said there's got to be you know obviously we know it, it's it's a globe right so i spent nine months not kidding you brian i spent nine months looking at this thing and went at it from every angle i could and everything every time i thought i had it two or three more threads opened up that i had to pull on and it just got worse and worse to the point where um sometime in january of this year i looked at it and i said okay because I, I was really just beating my head on the desk and i said w when did it become a globe exactly how do i know it's a globe and then i you know i had that moment where in february where i i said uh you know i woke up in the middle of the night and and i had the narrative in my head and i flipped like a lot of people do in this movement now you go from i hate flat earth i hate flat earth i hate flat earth and all of a sudden hey i like flat earth there's no middle ground it is totally polarizing 
And that's what I did. I, I started building the clues. I called them Flat Earth Clues. And I went through as basically, not necessarily a dummy's guide uh, to the Flat Earth, but pretty close. You know, I made it as, as basic as I could, no math, easy to grasp concepts, put it out there, didn't monetize it, didn't allow ratings uh, or comments or anything right away. And I started getting calls right away, and it really resonated with a lot of people. But what I, the clues were basically doing was, and I was hoping somebody would answer it. I was basically ans- asking the whole internet, how do you know it's a globe? Well, like asking you, your listeners, whoever's listening now, when did you first figure out it was a globe? And it always boiled down to two questions, which was one, well... Uh, I'm sorry, two answers, which is one, well, we, we know just because we know, duh, any idiot knows it's a globe. And I go, yeah, but how do you know? I mean, we know you drop a pencil, gravity makes it fall, right? And you burn, you know, fire burns, water is wet. But how do you know it's a globe? That's what I was hoping. It's like, please, somebody show me out there. And I thought it would have been shot down within a week or two. Somebody would have stumbled across it and say, hey, okay, here's why it's a globe. Here's the proof. You You can stop now. And the exact opposite started happening. Everybody that looked at this, once they started digging into it, and then it started expanding. People were doing their own theories. That's when it, uh, that's when it got to the point now where here we are in October, and the question hasn't been answered, and the movement has gotten huge, and there's you know podcasts showing up all over the place. I mean, <laughs> I, got, I, I got on Coast to Coast in th- three months. I didn't even have a website. And yeah. I don't... It was nutty. So, yeah, so here I am with you talking about this. When, when, we, shouldn't, <laughs> we, when we shouldn't be. It, we, we shouldn't be talking about this, but we are because no one's, no one's put this thing to bed. And uh, it's, it's amazing. So yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. I don't to think we're going to get close to putting it to bed. To be honest with you, but yeah, I I I, 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 I do hope have somebody to ask, and I was yeah. going to hold off till later on to ask this question, and I know it's it's in my notes here, but uh, yeah, what does your family think of all of this? <laughs> Uh, my family, actually, because of the, the type of person I am, uh, I'm, I, I was eccentric since day one. So even before I got into conspiracies, you know, my, my first conspiracy experience was, you know, watching JFK in the theater, like a lot of people. Uh, until, the, until then, I literally believed everything the news told me. It was like, oh, yeah, the news is the gospel. Whatever CNN says must be true because the media would never lie to us. I actually believed yeah. that. Like, get like, me started with that. Yeah, yeah. And so, my, so, but to answer your question briefly, I was eccentric enough that even, like, during college, I owned a comic book shop and a fireworks company at the same time. So, that's where I started, and I was 19. <laughs> so, when I got to finally to this in 2015, you know, years and years later, my family and friends weren't that surprised. I mean, yeah, their eyebrows raised somewhat, but they weren't like, "Oh, you know, he's, you've gone out the deep end and tried to do some intervention with me." Um, especially once once I started, people started calling me, and I started getting radio interviews. So it's yeah. like, all right, I, I must be doing something right. So yeah, yeah, I so you know, I was going to touch on transparency being everything, and you know, again, I'm not trying to agree. I mean, the obvious the the idea of the radio show is to you know combat and try to debunk everything, but sure. here's the problem: is is transparency is important, except yeah. that you give your phone number, your address, and you tell everybody to call you. So, or yeah. write you, stop on by and say hi. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> you know I can't really I, do a, a transparency thing here. So, well, I, I ju- to to yeah to address that real quick. I did that because I noticed at, at least on YouTube. Uh, where people seem to be gravitating more, even more than television, is that uh, they want transparency. They want to know if you're the real deal. It's like, all right, well, how can I do it? And I was actually going, how can I do this? All right, got to give my real email address. I've only got one. Uh, my real phone number, which you know you can call and and you know it'll go to voicemail. I may answer it depending. I try to answer some, but honestly, it's gotten nuts. Uh, and then my real home address, you know, because people are saying, you know, once I got supporters, people are saying, oh, can I send you money? Can I send you money? I'm going, no, don't send me money. Look, if you're going to send me anything, send me cookies. Because, you know, it's you like, know, look. You know, what? you know what? That's good to hear that you just said that you didn't want money because then there's no greed involvement. So exactly. Because you get you, you get accused of that, too. You know, once you start, it's like, you know, once you do a fund me page or, or something like that, you know, you, you lose some legitimacy because people think you're doing it for the money. I said, no, this is really about the idea. And 
for the most part, I got rid of almost all of the the shill labels. I mean, yeah, there was a couple of people out there that, that didn't like what I was doing, but that well, what it wasn't because they necessarily thought I was a, a government employee. The, I was disagreeing with some of the true, uh, the pure flat Earth models. Uh, my model was slightly different. Enough diff- uh, there was enough difference that I was getting some heat from people that that called themselves pure flat earthers as going on right. to my next question i was going to actually bring up i'd noticed sure. that um you call it an enclosed world and uh-huh. it's not the same thing as flat earth i mean what, what it are your is peers saying well it is and it isn't and the reason i say that is because whether it's enclosed or not it's still flat uh, but the peers there's there's two basic schools of thought that are out there and that is one it's a flat Earth with no boundaries whatsoever. It's kind of like an infinite plane. So, the, you know, the, so outside of our flat world, it's just ice, and, uh, and, and there's no barriers. But I try to treat it more like the Truman Show, which is why I really don't like even saying flat Earth anymore. I, no offense, because I know the radio show is that's what you're <laughs> going to use, because it, it generates controversy. But the enclosed world is really just a giant version of the truman show the uh, the 1998 movie with jim carrey which is which was based on if anyone hasn't seen it i'll give you a quick premise which is a hollywood studio builds basically a sports stadium that's like 20 miles wide and they create a fake sky with stars and a fake little uh, lake that appears to be like an ocean and a town on a peninsula and they convince uh, they 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 raise a child in this environment, and they base a reality show off him. And the question is, what I said, okay, yeah, you could fool a few people in this town, no question, as long as you can keep them from traveling. But what if you if you made that dome, that Truman Show, thousands of miles wide, and say a couple hundred miles to ha- high, could you fool an entire civilization? You like you know, say a few billion people. And the more I looked into it, the more I realized that not only is it possible, it is very likely that it's already happened. And we never figured it out, but the government did back in 1956, and they decided to, uh, you know, put a lid on it and keep it a secret for as long as they have. And in 2015, for whatever reason, uh, now it seems to be um, falling apart. All right, so, you know, you mentioned before that you were a big conspiracy buff. At least that's what you say when you first start doing your... your oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do want to clarify something here, though. Mm-hmm. You say that you're a big conspiracy buff and that you were looking for another conspiracy. Now, the definition of conspiracy, if no one knows, is a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. Yeah. And then, you, of course, you've got theory, which is a super... It, it's a supposition or a system of ideas that's intended to explain something, especially uh, one based on general principles independent of the thing trying to be explained. Um, yeah. th- do you think that this is a conspiracy, or do you think this is more? It's bigger. It's bigger. Oh, let's put it this way. It's, <laughs> it's, it's so big that really it transcends conspiracy, but I don't know what other words you put on it because there have been, because the government has been involved in a big way to at least keep it hidden. Now, who built the original structure? You know, you, you want to talk about the divine or, or an advanced civilization, the Anunnaki, the Nephilim, take your pick. Whoever <laughs> built the structure, whoever built the structure, that goes way beyond conspiracy. That's the creators of where we live. But when it comes to the conspiracy, where the conspiracy came in was back in the 50s when it was finally discovered, and I think we knew. I think our secret societies figured it out a long time ago, but until we had the internal combustion engine, there was no way for them to actually map out where we were. They, it wasn't physically possible, and I kind of joked about it in other things where I said, look, if you were the king of France in 1500, someone showed you a flat earth map, and they said, oh yeah, this is dead on accurate. What, what good is it going to do you? It's not gonna, you're not going to be able to do anything. You do not have the tools to, to do anything about it or even take advantage of it. So, yeah, the government, in, in my opinion, and you know, you'll have to look at the clues to get all the details because I know we don't have time oh, here, yes. but the, uh, you know, the government figured it out. The United States and Russia basically ran into it almost simultaneously in, uh, during Operation Deep Freeze in 1956 down in what is called Antarctica. 
And the, a big decision was made then. Do we keep it a secret or, or do we not? And I know you probably have a question. It's like, why? Why, why would that oh, happen? No, I've got plenty of those. Don't worry. No, okay. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, they, they, they decided to keep it a secret. So yeah, that's when the conspiracy came into play. Because you had to spend a huge amount of money over the last 60 years. I mean, you basically had to invent NASA. NASA was not, there was no space race. That never happened. The, 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 the only race was who was going to really take charge of faking it. And since Russia was still rebuilding from World War II, it really fell on the shoulders of the United States. And, and you think people think I'm joking. Uh, look at England. Ask, them why, yeah, ask people why England never had a space program, ever. And why, and uh, I, I know why. You look at the movie uh, Diamonds Are Forever, a James Bond film with Sean Connery. When he runs, remember, that's a British film where he runs across a Hollywood soundstage, which is where they're faking the moon landings, and the, 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 the tower says, oh yeah, get him, right? But the astronauts can't catch him because they're still staying in character, so they have to run in slow motion. And he steals their moon buggy and drives off the set. It's brilliant. It's, okay, uh, so you, you, we were just touching on science, and I kind of wanted to ask you a question about it before we get off it. Uh, yeah. Okay. What can you offer us that religions and science can't? And the reason why I bring this up is because, um, let me set some ground rules, I guess, is what I'm really trying to get at here. Um, okay. So there's going to be a list of men that I'm going to bring up right now, and the list of men that I'm going to bring up, uh, they, they've all done extreme research. You know, they're all scholars. They're all, they're, they're not stupid by any means or accounts. In fact, they're pretty much geniuses. Um, yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, he's <laughs> one of the leading scientists who stands before NASA and the government all the time, yep. fighting them to get into space. Yep. Uh, Bill Nye, Albert Einstein. Um, you know Julius Robert Oppenheimer. He's the father of the atomic bomb. Yep. Um, Carl Sagan. He's the host of Cosmos, which he's also uh, one of Neil deGrasse's. Uh, he's one of his uh, mentors. Yeah. Um, now all of these guys, I mean, they're they're huge and they're extremely smart. So I guess yeah. my question to you is, what makes these guys wrong in your opinion, and why would these people not even consider a flat Earth model if, by any remote <laughs> chance, it might be, you know, correct? Yeah, yeah, no, it's an excellent question. Um, I'm glad you asked it because every once in a while, someone will bring me bring up to me. It's like, well, do you think you're you're smarter? Sometimes they'll bring up Stephen Hawking in well, addition to it, like a, it's not so much. It's not so much smarter than these guys. It's just okay. I mean, look, you you don't have to go to school. As I have a brother, and <laughs> that Billy, you're going to kill me. But um, you know, he's. He barely got through high school. In fact, I don't even think he completed high school. But he challenges yeah. me a lot of the time when I uh, when I go up against him. I mean, just you know, trying to outwit him. And sure. the, the whole point I'm bringing up here, though, is these guys are like in a whole different class of people. Oh yeah, <laughs> and they do it without greed. I mean, they're doing it because it's science, and yeah. they back it a hundred percent. So I, my question I, is to you. You know what? What one puts you on the same level? But two, what? You know, why would these people not even consider or even think of the enclosed world model? Because they would not. They would never consider the enclosed world model. In fact, all these people you listed, <coughs> except for um, the the ones that passed away. Excuse me. I can't say drink water. <laughs> is um, <coughs> is uh, is uh is this. They, their problem isn't because, look, they're all brilliant, no question. Uh, you know, some of them are more brilliant than others. But all their methodologies and theories and whatever else they're proposing uh, was based off of, off of foundations that were wrong to begin with. So they, I don't blame them. It's like, look, you know, look, they study the same textbooks as uh, kids in college are studying now. But the problem is, is those textbooks were based on older works that were based on older works that if you go back 500 years were wrong to begin with. They just, it's, it's, it's not that they are dumb or don't want to look at it. It's just that their entire life's work has been based on the wrong foundation. But like anything, it's a leap of faith. So they believe that absolutely the books that they uh, studied in college were, were in high school were dead on correct. And so 
once that assumption was made, they had no choice but to keep going forward. If they didn't, they'd never be who they are now, which is why I kind of joke around. I say, look, with every other type of person that's out there, you can get your head around this because it's really common sense, like your, like your brother you were talking about. Uh, you know, Common sense really is the rule of the day here because common sense will tell you eventually what's right and wrong. Uh, but if you're an astronomer or an astrophysicist, you're in real trouble because if you finally, you know, say the mass media or all of a sudden you get that aha moment where you figure out, oh, wow, it turns out the Earth is actually an enclosed system, um, you're not going to be able to deal with it very well. You're probably going to climb into a very expensive bottle of scotch and stay there because you just spent 15 years of school and however many years outside of school preaching the exact opposite, especially if you're an astrophysicist. I mean, Neil deGrasse Tyson, no offense to the guy, he's a great public speaker and and very uh, charismatic and could probably do work in other fields, but he's NASA's poster boy. You know, they they push him out on stage whenever they need something, and no, he's never ever going to look at it. Luckily, there's very few of these people out there, which is why the movement has been growing so quickly. Because they're here. Here's uh, let me let me answer it this way, a, a different way as well. They when they try to come at it, and they still have have not created a, you know astrophysicist panel and astronomers panel to come out and try to shoot this thing down, because they've got a problem, and that is their only weapon is math, and the math loses people. Yeah, it may be convincing to some, but even basic curve math just throws people because most people, you know, barely even got out of algebra in high school, let alone trig or calculus or quantum mechanics or any of that other stuff. So when they start hitting people with math and then the the uh, the flat earth people come with common sense and say, "Yeah, what about this? What about this? What about this?" You know, simple sentences they can understand. That's why they're losing. They're, they've been losing since this thing really started going into gear this year. And I feel bad in some ways. So my brother does have a question. He texts me his question. Uh, Perfect. What has he got? <laughs> okay, he says, why and how could you keep this a secret? And what, what about the explorers before the USA and the modern government? Um, okay, I'll, I'll, it's a two-part question. Uh, but I'll answer the the explorers first. The explorers first, because of how this thing's set up, you can't find it on your own until literally, and again, you have to watch the clues to to figure it out, but since I'm not selling anything, it's not really a pitch when I say that, Uh, which is first, uh, the first until... throw an ad up. (laughs) (laughs) There you go, yeah. (laughs) Buy buy this prize. I don't don't even know what to endorse if I was going to endorse something. But uh, the first thing was this. Yeah, there you go, snow globes. I'm going to corner the snow globe market. Hey, the, um, this is coming up. There, there you go. The uh, until until the internal combustion engine came out, no explorer could go far enough because of how the outer boundary is set up. Meaning, by the time you get close to Antarctica, the temperature takes a huge nosedive. You run into icebergs. Then you have a 150 to 200 foot wall of ice straight up when you get to the coastline. Good luck climbing that. When you get up there, hopefully you brought some supplies with you because there's no indigenous plant life, animal life, no ancient cultures, no ruins. You've just got hundreds and thousands of miles of ice that go nowhere, which is why they sent Admiral Byrd down there. And look it up. This is not secret information. Why they sent Admiral Byrd down there from 1928 until 1956, sent him down there for basically 30 years looking for this thing, looking for an edge any edge and then once they found it then they had something and again that's when the math takes over it's okay we got to map this thing out so So i uh, guess the next question i would have for you because i want to i want to we're going to get into admiral bird trust me sure 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 sure. he was a key thing with you uh what i saw in the the videos Mm -hmm. uh well i guess my question to you would be who built it (laughs) oh that little question um (laughs) It's who only built three it? Letters, or three letters, yeah. Right? Thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, throw that little one at me. No, I get that question all the time. I, I got that question the first week I put out the clues, which is it depends honestly on your upbringing, and that may sound like a cop out, uh, but I'm not going to be arrogant enough to say. Well, you know what? That- you know what? I, I'm going to cut you off real quick. I uh, I wanted to to mention my, you know my 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 theory on on religion is that every religion has a piece of the truth. Uh, there you go. You you look at the Mayans; they have a calendar. You look at the Bible; it has end world stuff. You know, you look at a Quran; it has uh, various different ways to treat neighbors and people. I mean, you know, it, they all the religions. They all I I like to think of it as 
if you could get all the people together, you would have the truth. I think yeah. that there's a piece of the truth in every single religion that is there. And that's, that's the way to Yeah, you're you know, you're absolutely right. That that's excellent, which is why when I was talking about this uh, I what I really did was because I, I didn't want to exclude any religion uh, because I, I do think they, they all have some sort of piece to the puzzle in here and that is at least the big five which is um, Buddhism, Hinduism, Judaism Islam and Christianity which make up what 80% of the population of the world and what basically this kind of ties into who built it and that is is it an advanced civilization? Is it the divine? Is it God? Yeah, yeah, maybe all those things. But what, at the very least, what it shows you is some sort of intelligent design. Meaning whoever built it is a lot bigger than us, a lot better than us at, at, at our same game. Which is why I kind of touched on the clues. It's like, look, if there's, which is why this is so important because so many people come out and, and say, well, why does it matter? Who, if it's round or flat, was going, are you kidding me? If the hand of God was on the wall down the road, you really don't think anyone would care? That's, that's like one of the quintessential questions of existence. And uh, so, yeah, who built it? Do I, you know, I'm not going to put a name to God. You know, I'll let others do that. You know, all I'm trying to do is is, <laughs> is, defi- is define structure here. And I'm saying, look, so whoever built it is very old, very powerful, and uh, I think there's a purpose to it. And what that purpose is 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 got everything to do with us, which changes the whole role of the universe. You are not a speck flying through an empty void. You are in a very intimate setting, and literally, in this case, the universe does revolve around you. Okay. Then here's the next question. Yeah. Is it holographic or solid? I mean, how... how- uh, you you want to get you want to get into the question of def- of defining matter? Uh, okay, wow. okay, we, we'll, we'll we'll take okay. Let's take out the whole idea of you know because some people are going to say, well, you know, since atoms are made mainly most of empty space, because then you're talking about semantics. Well, let's get the atoms out of the qu- the equation, and that is, is it holographic or is it solid? It's, and I don't want to cop out necessarily and use the the Morpheus Neo conversation, which is what is real. But at the same time, some of it does, you know, look, if anyone has any doubts, look at the double slit experiment of quantum physics. And that is, which which may answer the question that the gaming world has known for about 20 years now, which is, uh, which we've all heard in grade school. And that is, if a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? And only now do we realize, especially with the double sit experiment, look this up in your own spare time, that it probably doesn't make a sound because the tree was n- is not there. Until someone's actually there to witness the tree, the tree isn't there. And so, but at the same time, I think it's as real as anything. But Okay, so I, I'm getting a whole bunch of questions in, uh, no, boy, and I've got go. it written down as well, and it just happens to be right now. So, okay, okay, okay. the question I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you on this is, uh, <laughs> Hang on. what about the space programs and the event like the moon landing? I mean, that's oh, historic. that's historic. The- I mean, you gotta. Yeah, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Unfortunately, especially since we're in America. Now, if you're outside of America, there's already a lot of doubt when it comes to our space program because our space program has never aged like television shows and movies of that era of the '60s. It has not the aged planet well. Planet is so big and blue and beautiful. Oh, isn't it? I mean, it's <laughs> it's look the 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 space. All right, let me let me throw this. What are you doing to me, man? I'm so sorry. It, look, it changes things, but other things to, to uh, it changes other things to the better. But the space program, you got to give it up. Uh, everyone, you know, the Apollo program especially has been. In fact, it answered the the enclosed system answered a really old question for me because I looked at the Apollo program stuff. You know, uh, wonderful documentaries out there about people just butchering the uh, the Apollo program and just dissecting it. You know, frame by frame. Um, again, if anyone has any doubts, go to moviemistakes.com. Uh, you know these. Are the same people that go after. They turned from the fictional world to the non-fictional world and found out they were making the same mistakes. So when the the when the Apollo, the, the, here's the question that I finally got answered, which was, why would you ever fake the Apollo program? Which is you know what a lot of debunkers will say. They'll say, well, why would you ever fake it? And it bugged me because I was like, yeah, you're right. Why would you ever fake it? Because it, yeah. it doesn't make sense. But if it's an enclosed system. 
that changes the question really into a statement, which is, it's not that they wanted to fake the Apollo program. They had to fake it. Because if they didn't fake it, eventually the private sector, like Lockheed Martin or General Dynamics or Boeing, they would have gotten involved. Sooner or later, someone was going to have to fake a picture of the Earth from space. And the only way you can do it, unfortunately, is you have to create a some sort of rocket program, at least on the surface level, which appears to go high enough to take the picture of Earth. And if you think I'm kidding, look up how many pictures of Earth have been, full-blown lit pictures of Earth have been taken of the Earth from space since 1972. There have been one. One picture. And then, miraculously, in July of this year, well, a second NASA just came out and said that they doctor photos, so... Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm, and I'm sorry, I know people, and then people will do it in stages, because again, this is all about letting go of things. They'll say, well, okay, yeah, it just tickles me when I hear this, they'll say, well, alright, fine, the Apollo program was a mess, but the ISS is real. It's like, really, man? Really? Because if they're going <laughs> to fake one thing, they're going to fake it all. And uh, as a matter of fact, the, the, the guy, I had a guy, um, it's going to be on, on my next show. I'm reading a statement from him. He, he's not going to, he's going to be anonymous, but he is coming from uh, an industrial valve industry where he's coming straight out and saying, look, the ISS is, is impossible. Absolutely impossible from a structural or from a mechanical engineering standpoint. It cannot be done the way they say it is, and uh, and he gives tons of examples and and it's it's brilliant. I I I, I recorded the whole thing in my voice uh, this morning. So. Humana story thanks you for listening and your activity with our community. We hope to grow a little each day with the lives of ordinary people doing extraordinary things in life changing events. Okay, so go ahead and uh, explain the whole bird thing to me. He was the youngest admiral in the United States Navy of, of all time. He made admiral at age 41. Uh, yes, he was a Freemason, so yes. Was he taking orders? Yeah, probably, but did he know where he was going? Probably not. But from 1928 up until 1956, he was looking for something. He and all his teams were looking for something down uh, around Antarctica. And that was very interesting to, to me because... Before Operation Deep Freeze in 1955, he did an interview on a television show called The Long Gines Chronoscope. And you can see this on, on uh, YouTube. All you have to do is type in Admiral Byrd interview. He's got very few television interviews, but somebody, some CBS affiliate, because remember this was back in the days when there was only three television channels, some CBS affiliate put this thing up on air. And really during the interview, it was exclusive, it was just him and a a couple guys talking about this, he was really talking about how Antarctica is the most important place in the world, uh, both scientifically and economically. Uh, He said it's basically made out of money, that there's an entire mountain range made out of coal, that there's minerals, there's oil, there's uranium, and there were a slew of countries down there that were interested in, in taking hold of these resources, most notably Great Britain and Russia, because they had finished with World War II somewhat earlier, and they were trying to rebuild. And he was talking about during the show that he was getting ready for his next mission, which is Operation Deep Freeze. And he, was, and he said on, on air, he says, oh, yeah, there's going to be missions down there all the time, nonstop. You know, just go, go, go. So during Operation Deep Freeze, he finds something. Something that was apparently so big, so jaw-dropping, they couldn't even come up with a cover story for it. And it, it was obviously whatever they had been looking for for the last 30 years. And all of a sudden... And I and I don't even think they knew that they were going to find it then, because you know you don't go on television and say get all the resource companies to to say oh yeah we're we're totally you know on board with this and let's go make money, because right after Operation Deep Freeze, everybody leaves the ice at the same time, like their lives depended on it. Why not make it as make up something to try to hide resources from people? There were too many nations down there, and some of them were very desperate, especially Great Britain and Russia. They really needed them. Are you really telling me you can talk out, you can talk all these nations to leave unilaterally, and then sign a treaty on top of it saying that nobody gets to go there ever? A treaty that's not even uh, up for uh, review until 2041? It's, it's unheard of. I've never even heard of a, a treaty that, that has been that unilateral across the board. Um, there's well, some that, people... That was the, that was the, uh, the big question um, regarding <laughs> going down to Antarctica. I mean, he says there's a lot of resources, and wouldn't one um, 
<laughs> okay, if one country went down to Antarctica, sure, and uh, was able to obtain all the resources or even use half the resources, they would, it would be a big game changer. So, yes. Uh, kind of like if I had a nuclear weapon and you had a nuclear weapon, you would not attack me because, yeah. well, I, you know, if you attacked me, I would shoot a nuclear missile at you. And sure. that would be just as devastating to you as it would be to me. So yeah. wouldn't that be reason enough? I guess the question would be, what makes you think that it was a barrier of sorts and not necessarily oh just uh, every resources? yeah just the oh oh because oh. that would change the entire economic a- pool of it all excellent questions and he really should watch the bird wall again because i i really delved into that and that was that's it was, what I, I was thinking i was yeah, yeah. i watched it and I, <laughs> you you know where i'm going with this which is yeah, it yes. wasn't it wasn't just about the resources or leaving the ice it was all the moves that happened off of antarctica at the same time um the first of which was that the united states and russia for apparently no apparent reason just started ramping up their rocket programs uh, at a fevered pitch and within a year so they start their rocket programs immediately after this happens after after operation deep freeze happens and remember these were the two countries that were the 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 big players down there and within a year of the rocket programs getting off the ground they started attaching atomic weapons to the top of them and they started firing them straight up for four years Big hits too. We're not talking twenty kiloton uh, stuff that that happened. Yeah, you're talking like the Czar bomb and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, not exactly the Czar bomb, but, <laughs> but, but big stuff, megaton, megaton class weapons, and they're firing them up. And you're and you know at decent ranges, you know, two hundred kilometers, four hundred kilometers. You know, if you believe what they say, and and they, you know, they're all listed in Wikipedia. At least you know the public shots that they talked about. And while they were doing it, so like, so 1958, they start firing the weapons, right? Straight up. By the second or third shot, I mean, literally by the second or third shot, not the package of shots, but the second or third shot, United States just forms NASA. It's like, let's just form NASA right now in 1958. And all of a sudden, the space race is born at the same time that the arms race is, is ramping up. And then in 1959, here's where it gets really interesting. 1959, NASA, uh, an employee at NASA, Van Allen, more more specifically, announces the Van Allen radiation belts, the most deadliest, you know, they couldn't help themselves. So in 1959, they say, oh, yeah, by the way, there's this huge, thick band of radiation which will kill anyone that goes through it, uh, so don't ever go up there. And at the same same time they announce the radiation belts is the same year they signed the treaty down in Antarctica that says nobody's going down there. And I'm sorry, if you announce one or the other, and you space them out, it maybe maybe I'd give you the benefit of the doubt. But say, oh, by the way, the outer edge is off limits and the upper edge is off limits. At the same time, that screams structure. And, you know, so, the, the fa- sorry, go ahead. Well, okay, are, are you saying that it's enclosed to keep us in? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. I, I'm saying that nobody is allowed to get out of this place. Um, and I'm not even, so, I, but I'll, I'll even go, I'll go one step further, and that is, I don't think the Van Allen radiation belts were ever real. I think it was just their excuse to try to militarize space, which is exactly what NASA was. NASA became the gatekeepers of space. And that is, and even today, even if, if every private space program has to go through NASA in, in one way or another, or they have to go through the, uh, the AST, the, uh, the Aeronautical and Space Transportation Bureau, which I didn't even know existed until I called one of these uh, SpaceX or equivalents. I called uh, Interorbital, had a discussion with them about what was going on, and I thought that they had to file their flight plans with NASA. No, they have to file their flight plans with a whole other bureau of the government, which no one's ever even heard of. But the Van Allen radiation belts is another fascinating thing, which I've got to throw at people out there who are listening, because that's the big gorilla in the room when it comes to NASA that NASA will never talk about. And that is, if you announce in 1959, and that's when they really, they didn't just shoot themselves in the foot, they shotgunned their own leg off, which was, they say, oh yeah, the Van Allen radiation belts, horrible, terrible, you can't get through them. But 10 years later, starting with, I believe, Apollo 8, they start making round trips through them. 
right? Round trips. That's two ways, right? Through these thick radiation belts. Nobody died. Nobody got cancer. Uh, none of the, the pods were contaminated to the point, you know, it's like, you know, they just put them straight into the Smithsonian. You know, those things should have been glowing. The astronauts should have been glowing if that was real. The question is, how did you get through the belts if you didn't have shielding? Because what they didn't realize, because nobody knew anything about radiation back then, is there's really only two common elements that you can use to stop radiation. One we know about, that's lead, that's what you wear at the dentist's office before you get your x-rays taken, and the other is gold. Yeah, the, the <laughs> other is, is gold, which is twice as dense as lead, and that's, you know... The problem is, is you can't put super heavy things on the top of rockets. Basically, you can't fly an anchor. They knew this. So, well, how did you get an asteroid that hits 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 a rocket goes right through it? Yeah, yeah. And so, oh, so anyway, uh, the the point was, all these moves were happening right after operation deep freeze and it just got worse from there then the apollo program was announced uh you know right in fact the apollo pros program was announced uh, right deep, uh, right deep freeze is is the the uh in united states the operation Antarctic. it's it's the operation that sent bird down there with 4700 men no 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 that was operation high jump which is a whole nother can of worms which would <laughs> We did expeditions down there the entire time, with the exception of a gap, which was World War II. But guess who was doing stuff down there in World War II? Nazi Germany. So, the, so Operation High Jump, which was right after World War II in 1956, we sent down a full-blown carrier group, 13 boats, I believe, 5,000 men. And who was heading up the whole thing? Admiral Byrd. Who else? And the rumor was that they were there to try to root out the rest of you know the the Nazi forces who had were trying to escape down in Antarctica. Why I have no idea where they were going. Did they find a door? Who knows? Okay, so then there's a few questions about this the dome itself in Antarctica. Which sure. is if, if if we were to to go to the edge, yeah. Uh, what will we see? see? The roundness of the planet. You mean the circular part of the planet? Yeah, 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 yeah. You would. That's that's why I think they uh, started up the rocket program because I think they figured it out by plane. Now, whether it was a hard barrier or a soft barrier, that remains in doubt. But what they realized was it was so large that they couldn't figure it out where they were. So, and even if they could, they could only figure out two dimensions, which was, you know, what, you know, if they went left and right, they could kind of figure out the circumference of it, but they had to figure out the arc, you know, the, how high up it was going. And the only way they could do that was with rockets. Uh, normal planes, remember, they didn't even have, nobody had jet planes back then. I mean, yeah, Nazi Germany was experimenting with it at the end of the war, but the only thing they, they, they had were rockets, and those weren't very good. So, coincidentally, the United States and Russia, the only people they could do it, they fired up the rocket programs with who? The Nazi scientists, the best guys in the world at the time. Um, and tra- and they, when they were firing the rockets with the, the atomic weapons, they were hitting the sky. That was They weren't doing anything other than to try, well, one, they were trying to bust through it, which it was Oh, that was, just, oh, that was a terrible idea. And two, but it's that's what guys would do. Uh, and two, they could paint the sky, and every rocket they learned more and more about exactly how high they could go. Because the space program, you can't just send rockets up straight up. You got to need you need to know exactly how far these rockets can go before they arc over. Because otherwise, you're just going to crash them right into you know whatever's up there. Okay. Well. I guess the next question, speaking of up, <laughs> yeah, it's ironic that you're, you're we're we're going through it, but it it we're doing it. So, yeah. what about meteorites and shooting stars and asteroids and such? Oh, that's I mean, easy. Wouldn't... I can I'll, I'll answer that two ways. Uh, one one will make you ask a question, and the other one kind of will make sense. And that is, first off, as far as if you think the Earth is a globe, right? then meteorites and asteroids pose an interesting problem because if there are between, depending on what list you look at, from three to 15,000 satellites in all different ranges, some geostationary, some are orbiting, but no matter what happens, every time there's a meteor shower... And we, you know, the, the local news will announce it. Say, oh yeah, it's really pretty. You can look to the west and you know look towards these stars, and you'll start seeing it. Nobody seems concerned that these meteorites, even though they're entering the atmosphere, <clears throat> are going to strike any satellites or any space thing or anybody that's up there, which I which I think is very very interesting. However, when it comes to meteorites, excuse me, drink of water. <clears throat> when it comes to meteorites, 
it's easy to do from a design standpoint. It was one of the things I didn't include in the clues, but uh, I didn't think I had to because it was, you know, it seemed minor to me, which was, look, if you can build a structure that's 10,000 miles wide and 400 miles high, then introducing meteorites into the system, that's that's pretty easy. You know, just take a chunk of metal ore, fire it with a rail gun or whatever you want at some shallow trajectory. The atmosphere and friction takes over. Try not to aim at any cities because you don't want to mess things up there. And up until now, we haven't had any meteorites or anything hit any cities, even though there's some big craters lighting around. Okay. And, uh, and that's it. So... Again, we're going to touch on this one more time just to make sure. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, you're saying that we did or did not go to the moon. Absolutely, 100% did not under now, any circumstances. is a pretty pretty high percentage. No, no, you not only did you did no, I, I take it I take it a step further and I'm not shy about saying this because I know it's a taboo subject in America, uh, especially on Fox News. You, yeah, you don't ever say we won or you know we, Yeah, yeah. America rah rah we wave the flag. When we, yeah. Yeah, I get that. But outside this country, a lot of people are way more susceptible to believe, especially Great Britain. But not only did we not go to the moon, but I'm saying that the entire NASA program from day one, from 1958 until now, has been an utter and total and complete sham. Uh, You can look up all sorts of fun things online. There's tons of documents. You mentioned something about Lunar Wave earlier, but I didn't ask the question about it because we were having those difficulties. Oh, no worries. (laughs) But now Uh, we're back on the air. What is the Lunar Wave? The Lunar Wave is a video series that a guy named Crow Triple Seven, and you can spell it the literal way, just C R O C R O Triple Seven, you know, seven seven seven, or C R R O W. You're going to get to the same place, or you can just type in Lunar Wave. It's not going to make any difference. You can Google it, YouTube it, you'll find it. And that was when he took some long-term HD movies of the Moon, where he basically hooked up a decent camera to a, a decent telescope. He ran into an issue where he was seeing a refresh rate. Go through the moon. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you're old enough to remember the vertical hold lines that would go through televisions when before we had cable. Remember those. Hit nine nine to watch the Spice Channel. I'm I'm aware of that. There you go. There you go. (laughs) So so this was the vertical hold issue that was going through the moon itself, and it was not a camera issue. He proved that because when he tilted up the camera, the the wave didn't follow the tilt of the camera. It just stayed consistently through the moon. And he caught and it caught up with him eventually. And when you're looking at this, you don't know what you're seeing because you're saying, Well, you know, if coming from a gaming standpoint, you know, because I was in the gaming world for a long time. I, I looked at it and I, I literally said out loud, I was going, why is there a refresh issue with the moon? Because that sentence, I shouldn't ever have to utter that sentence. Because that implies that the moon, what we see as the surface of the moon, is only a projection. And if that's the case, then what is projecting it? Is it underneath? Is it like a death star you know that's underneath this thing? That, uh, the, 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 the craters and everything we see on the surface is, is not what we think it is? And if that's the case... Well, then you absolutely didn't go to the moon because everyone knows that, you know, they land and there's the craters just like you see. But you can't land on an illusion. You can't land on a, on a television image. So... But you can create one in a set. Exactly. I, all I need is a green screen behind me and I can make myself look like I'm on a beach. That and uh, I'll throw I'll throw out a couple of the, to your moon people out there that are ask, they're asking. Uh, I said this in one of the clues and that is fine. Find me a single video image... Uh, you know, clip of any astronaut with the camera, with the camera running. And I mean, not just the moon. Any any astronaut. But you can. We'll pick the moon. We'll pick on the moon right now. Take an okay. take an astronaut with the camera running who just turns around with the camera okay. running. That's it's just a panning all shot. Right, all right. So okay, I do have a question on that though because we we do have the tub, the Hubble telescope which pans around. Uh, yeah, that, yeah. But one, that's the Hubble telescope. I want I want an actual a, actual astronaut. Somebody holding a camera that turns around because they can't. The Hubble telescope, no, no, it's a joke. Uh, the the the, the long term that could be an illusion as well, right? I mean, well, it doesn't have to be. I mean, look at look when the Hubble went online and realized that all the images that we were able to create at that point. Uh, the Hubble tell everything about NASA, and I can't stress this enough. And I know it's tough, especially for Americans. And look, I'm I'm there with you. Look at rah rah, go go team, but. <laughs> 
at the same time. Are you time. trying to get a shot? No, no, I mean, not at I all. Just... It's this. There's a reason why I'm doing this, and we, if we ever get to it, I'll, I'll tell you. But when it comes, if we live to, long enough. We'll no, I... live long enough. You'll be <laughs> no. fine. I, I, no, I, as far as I have not got any death death threats or suits and sunglasses showing up. I'm Mike really Dor- surprised. I mean, not just from yeah. suits, but uh, yeah, uh, I know. People I've got who some... really take religion seriously. I mean, no, 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 no. People... Religion, religion has actually gotten on board with this thing mostly because. Uh, and people forget that up until 500 years ago, uh, every religion, every tribe, every culture, they all believed in this. It wasn't until 500 years ago that we went from a flat geocentric model uh, where the Earth was the center of the universe to a, uh, a spherical thing where we were flying around the sun and the sun was flying around other things. Um, Which brings uh, me to how old do you think our you know, solar system is then? Oof. They talk millions of years, billions of years. No, 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 nothing like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, and again, I don't want to uh, cheat too much and, and <laughs> so use the matrix thing here, but it's really, it's not about uh, thousands or millions of years. It's about really uh, one from uh, from one civilization to another, meaning we, not only are we in an enclosed structure, we are not even close to the first people to rent this apartment. Uh, there well, okay, p- which brings me to my next question to you is... is with all this information that you're giving, I mean, how I, it's bound to come out, and somebody's going to ask the question. So I guess it'll be me. Is sure, sure. Is, why are you so certain? Like, wh- how are you certain that the information you've gotten is right over? Because. No, 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 I got you, I got you, because... I, I don't uh, know how to word that, and I don't no, want to no, sound no. like a, a, what, a what, jerk. <laughs> what get, no, what, no, what gives me the conviction that I have right now on exactly. this? Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's a couple of things. One is, though, is that no one's been able to answer the question. No, There is no, uh, I'll use a, a Kennedy reference here, there's been no magic bullet to shoot this thing down yet. And if this thing, as far as conspiracies go... I have never seen one that's not only so polarizing, where there's nobody on the fence. You either are into flat Earth or you are totally against it. But if this thing should have been shot down by now, if it if it well, you've had, got uh, me riding the fence. I won't lie. Part of me thinks you're completely insane, but the other part of me says you've got. Well, so that's that's just it. Here, you're you know? you're you're like the other, everyone else that I've met, including myself. Look, it's not like I woke up one day and said, "Oh yeah, flat Earth. This is a great idea." I know how. Well, be- the thing is, it's not it's not a new idea. I mean, nope. this came before even Copernicus. But this brings me to an ancient <laughs> an ancient man named Archimedes, which. He okay. I did have a whole line of other questions, but I, uh, you know, I'm going to go to those questions. I mean, obviously, I'm going to hit those questions as well. Um, sure, sure. Since we're back up and running, and we have everybody back listening, so. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, again, we do apologize for the technical problem earlier, and it's I my honestly fault. don't even know what it was. It was. It is your fault. I am. It is my fault. Absolutely. Because now I have to go back and edit stuff. Sorry. Okay. So, so, um, okay. The questions that I had were all pertaining to to the flat Earth theory, but I'm going to take this one step further. Um, something that has probably not been brought to your attention. Now, okay. I had noticed that you had a picture of yourself, and the picture that I actually took of you offline yeah. um, was you standing in front of the pyramids. Yep. Now, the reason I'm bringing up the pyramids is because Archimedes. Uh, he did math on the pyramid long ago. This mm-hmm. is before, you know, religions took hold. Yep. Um, and anyone, you can do a small uh, Google search on Archimedes and the Great Pyramid, and you'll run into this guy. Um, he's in Wikipedia, and you can find him in the Encyclopedia Britannica, whatever it is. I mean, it's a real guy. Um, yep. And he's been historically documented having done this with the pyramid and he does the math and he basically says it's like a geometric blueprint of the of the world but yeah. it's of a globe world yep and and everything that i had watched in this video um i mean matches with this theory on the pyramid 
um, Mm -hmm. all the ancient sites in the world are literally within feet of a line that's 30 degrees one way or the other if you go globular, okay? Yep. Um, (laughs) It matches almost to a point. I guess my question to you is, do you think that's part of the design? Or do you think that somebody... Or is it the, their interpretation of it of an older civilization, sort of like Einstein and and all the others, yes. where they made the math fit because their assumption was it's a globe, so let's build it into the architecture. Um, that's what I think, and and, and it's the a reason fair why question. I bring this up. The, the whole reason why I bring it up is yeah. because you know at the same time the flat Earth theory was there, so was the globular one. It just you know they didn't take root together. Yeah. Um, so both of these theories were there. One said, "Hey, it's a globe." One said, "Hey, it's flat." But, but you're suggesting that the people who had the globe theory were told, and from what I get in the videos, mm-hmm. you are specifically saying that there certain people are aware of the situation like the astronauts and you touched on a video i think it was astronauts gone wild or something weird yeah 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 i I wanted to to watch that video too but i didn't have time Eh, i mean it's okay i mean it's kind of frustrating it's like watching charlton heston get ambushed (laughs) it's like trying uh, to get an entire encyclopedia britannica down in one day before a show so (laughs) um okay but but again i touch on the pyramids because the pyramids even now are still a huge mystery and everything about the pyramids points up points up to space yep. and now from what you're suggesting that this is a cover-up mm-hmm. i i bring to you why would you put something on this planet that would point up if it is a cover-up because you wouldn't want people going up right well yeah but is it pointing up into space or is it pointing up at the ceiling you know is well, it uh, okay so there are three pyramids that 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 are connected i i i, I love the pyramids if you're wondering yeah Oh yeah, yeah. So the, that's why I went. Yeah. Uh, so there are three pyramids right next to Giza, which mm-hmm. is the main pyramid, and mm-hmm. all three of those align with Sirius A and B, and yep. I forget the other star. But yep. uh, all three of them align with the stars, which I guess would answer itself. Yeah. If <laughs> it is a projection and the stars are there, then yeah. we built this to China get our own mirrored image of reality which i guess i just kind of answered myself so that's okay no no i mean Um, you i I know where you're going with this and and again it can go either way in my opinion which is why i went out there to look at the pyramids because what i wanted to get at was all the math all the the math mm -hmm. and you know one of the reasons why you had mentioned yourself that the scientists that do this stuff um the scientists that study this stuff are hard in math is because math doesn't lie it's you know like you said one plus one i think you said two but you yeah. showed a picture of three yeah uh, you know but my, my point is we know three is wrong yes but we know that because we do the math yes and again the data that math provides mm-hmm. is almost factual i mean i don't imagine you could manipulate math um, so it's either right or it's wrong, which brings me to the pyramids. Good point. Good point. So, yeah, and you're saying because there's a lot of math built into the pyramids, and a lot of the math does talk about uh, not only about uh, alignment with the stars, but also a sphere. And, you know, the solar system, there is a whole bunch of math, that, that, uh, well, some wonderful things that are built into it. However, I'm going to treat it like everything else that was built. And that is, they were built it on the assumption that that's what it started out as. You know, whoever built the pyramids, maybe they didn't know uh, that it was, you know, there was an enclosed system. Maybe they did. We don't know. It's But if they, I bet you if you went back and revisited the pyramids from an enclosed standpoint, maybe you could find something in the in the numbers that pointed towards the enclosed system. I don't know. It's still too young. I mean, you got to remember, we've only been doing this since uh since february of this year oh, yeah yeah i so. i'm amazed at how much information you have put together and just well not just, just not just me i mean everybody it's it's been just a wild wild ride and i'm still trying to figure a lot of the stuff out myself but i, I do like where you're going with that where uh well, because, it, because nope. the pyramid is is it's still an oddity today i mean 
even after all these years, and it's one of the oldest structures in the world. Yeah. Um, and, you know, they're starting to theorize that the, the pyramids um, came, how do I word this, that the pyramids came before religion and before even the Egyptians moved in. Oh, I, that's starting to theorize all this, and they're not just theorizing it; they're starting to carbon date and prove. And I mean, it's yeah. insane. Yeah, I have. So, go ahead. I guess now my next question to you is: What ties do you think? Do you think that the pyramids might be a key? Yeah, I do. Uh, one way or another, I had no you doubt. Went out when, there. So. Yeah, when I when I went out there, I really wanted to stare. I you know walked up point blank and I wa- sat and stared at them for a long time and just uh, you know looked or walked around and tried to figure out what was going on there. But what you were saying that that was the first thing that hit me because I got a chance to go around Cairo, and that was I don't believe that whoever builds I I absolutely think they were built by a previous civilization and there was a big gap between that civilization and ours because whoever's still and I'm not picking on Egyptians if this name listen it but you don't they want had Muslims mad no well, no they had nothing to do with the building of that pyramid uh, or those pyramids they uh, you know there's no hieroglyphs that show any of the 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 building you know they said oh yeah we built it in 30 years but again you can look at the the number of blocks that were done it's like you didn't do it without help uh, and and one one other thing real quick and that was the Sphinx I, I look at the Sphinx more, and I look at the pyramids because well, it, the people were talking about the Sphinx being even older than the pyramids, and that it wasn't a head of a pharaoh either. That it was no. that it was actually a lion, and a pharaoh yeah. came in because think it's it's Smashed so obvious. It <clears throat> well, yeah, because but if they're you, not thinking that they're they're starting to say this is actually what happened, and it makes sense when you actually watch the videos and you see it. I mean, you've got to see it firsthand. To I mean, I've never been out there, but I've done a lot of research on on the Sphinx myself. Yeah. The fact that they, they these things are so massively huge, I mean, we yeah. don't even have the technology today to move that stuff. No, no, we so, don't. Uh, they, they're they're very impressive structures. I encourage anybody to you know to go out and check them out yourself. Although nowadays, you know, with with a decent HD DVD, you can get pretty much the same feel. Believe it or not, yeah. Which so. brings me back to our our uh, enclosed model here. Um, yeah. The. <laughs> Prior to the dome being built, what do you yeah. think the planet looked like? I think, depending on which civilization you go back to, I think it started all the way back with the Pangaea model, where there was a supercontinent in the center. And believe me, a supercontinent works way better on a flat model than it does a globe model, because you know then it spreads out evenly. I think there's been five, six, or more versions of this so i think it started out well, as- you're talking about the pangea model now you're talking about a different map so i'm going to bring up something because it was also brought up to me sure um it, it, we were talking of, you're talking about uh pangea yeah and i you know we look at a world map now right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i don't know how else to word this because i can't find the, the damn question i wrote too many questions down you have filled my head with a bunch of questions man sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> that's so, it. That's okay uh what i want to touch on is there's what i guess three or four different maps then i mean you've got you've got uh the the map that we know of as the globe map yeah, and the, then, now you touched on an AE map in one of your videos. Uh, yeah. I don't remember exactly. I think it was the flat Earth map, or, or yeah, yeah, the flat Earth map is the AE map, which can, is yeah. Can you get into detail on on this map? Sure. Uh, it's called the as the official. I call it the AE because the the official name is is not very flattering. It's called the yeah, AS. I couldn't pronounce it. That's why I said it. To you. Uh, yeah, and I hated it the first hundred times I said it. Uh, it's called the Azimuthal A Z I M U T H A L equidistant map, which is a long term for saying that you're looking at the world as if you were a globe staring at the top of the North Pole, and you just flattened the globe to where the continents spread out. Uh, and uh, spread eagled basically, and Antarctica, because it's on the bottom, became uh, not a continent like Australia, but was stretched all the way way around on the outside. And that map was the the entire concept of that view was designed a thousand years ago by a Persian scientist, which is interesting. And 
the, the the other interesting part is it's also used by the flat earth and the United States government. And you're saying, why would the United States government use it? And I said, I have no idea. Um, it's used, though, by the USGS, which is the United States uh, Geologic Survey. Are you listening, and- Billy? Because you need to know this. It's it's in it's in their catalog right now. You can you can look up on Wikipedia, and it's really interesting. You just all you have to do is look up list of ma- uh, world map projections. You pull up a list, and you can go through all these projections. There's a whole bunch, but this is the only one that's actually tied to certain groups. It's tied to uh, United States government. It's tied to Al Biruni, the Persian scientist, which happens to be uh, also NASA named a moon crater after him for no apparent reason. And it's also the UN flag. Uh, you know, the UN okay, flag. So, that, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, when you stare at the UN flag, you're looking at the AE map. But there's something missing about the UN flag, and I'm not going to take credit for who found it. That was uh, Matt Boylan. And he says there's no Antarctica on that map, which is which interesting. Which brings me to the next question, because everybody is asking that question. On, a, on this flat world map, where's Antarctica? There is no Antarctica. That's South that's. Pole. That's the trick. There is no South Pole. The, it's the one thing. Uh, there's two things on, on the flat map which are the giveaways. And one of which, though, the big one is Antarctica. Because on a flat map, there can't be an Antarctica uh, like we know it. You know, like a, this big white mass that's uh, the size of Australia or maybe a little bigger. It is literally the outer rim. It stretches around any, no matter what direction you go, you will always run into, into Antarctica. And you say, well, we kind of run into that on a globe too. I'm just going, yeah, not really. Not, not really. I mean, technically on a globe, you could go, you know, start going around the equator and you'd never run into Antarctica. But on a flat map, no matter which direction you go, you will always run into it. And which is, uh, which is interesting because that is the one continent that is sealed off from everybody, you know, by the Antarctic Defense Force and why no corporations can go down there and why it's been sealed off since 1959 and, and, and will continue to be sealed off forever and ever. Uh, so, yeah, Antarctica, in an interesting, interesting place. Look it up if you get a chance. Yeah, but the U.N. flag, brilliant. You know, the fact that the U.N. flag, that design was finished in 1946, even though Operation Deep Freeze wasn't until 10 years later, which makes me think that the powers that be, the authority, which I call you know, the governments, the elite, and the royalty, they knew okay. about it. So there was a guy back, I want to say in the 1500s, and he came from China or Japan, and I cannot remember his name right now. I would love to look him up. I was trying to find him for you before sure. the show. But he... Um, it is, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> uh, it is theorized that he had written or drawn a map of the globe and had done this prior to the 1700s when Copernicus mm-hmm. did his. Okay. Uh, so they're, say- they're thinking that the Chinese actually sailed the world before anyone else and documented it. And you can find this map. It's, it's hard to find. Yeah. But you can do it. And uh, I guess my questions would be to that. If I could find the name of the guy, was it, I'm what, probably going to bring you back to this show that's again. Okay. That's all right. <laughs> what, what, per, what perspective was the map? Do you remember? Was it a... Uh, it wasn't obviously a, an AE map. It was, it, no, it was, it was a globe map. Um, yeah. And he had drawn it out. And... But, but I, I, what I wanted to ask you about it was, what did you think of that? I, I'm sure somebody else has brought that up to you. <coughs> yeah, I just well, can't they, remember that guy's name. They they usually brought up the the generic question, a generic version of that, which is how can explorers sail around the world on a flat map? Wouldn't they know? And it's like no. That's like a no. It, or can't like one of those. One of those baking soda submarines in a bathtub. That's not a hard question. Yeah. Well. Well, no, because because some people say, well, it's like, how, is it possible? You know, wouldn't you be able to tell? Wouldn't you just sail off the edge? You know, that dumb old thing. It's like no, because if you're sailing, you know, if you're circumnavigating the globe from the equator standpoint, you're just really kind of going around in a big circle, like a like a record needle around a record. Um, but it's since you're talking about such vast distances and you're doing course corrections, no one's going to figure it out. You're just making one big giant 
left hand or right hand turn, you come back to where you were and you say, oh yeah, well it's probably a globe. Well, it doesn't have to be a globe. You could you could do that in your own circular dining room table. You know, it's it's really no different. <laughs> so okay, all right. So you're, <laughs> I I you know. <laughs> I, I I don't know what to say. You've got answers to all these questions, which means you've I've, probably. Been I've down been asked these questions. I I no. I mean, I ask these questions. Believe me, when I say anyone that's out there is going, well, I can debunk this. Fine, please try, because if it's in your head, you're going to do the same thing I did, which is you're going to look at this thing, you're going to try to tear it apart, and after a while, you're going to keep running into dead ends where you can't solve it and then you again you've got to ask yourself how do you know how do you really know well do you okay, know? so do then you... how come no one's actually gone in straight lines all around i mean we have the technology to do it now we've even got submarines that you know i i had a uh he was kind of like a dad to me his name was mike yeah. um but he worked on nuclear submarines and he yeah. would go in the water right it, we go deeper than a football field, and I can't tell you how far we go because it's classified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've heard the, I've heard the spiel. Yeah, but uh, the whole question behind this, the whole line of thinking, is mm. well, how come they haven't gone in a circle? I mean, or at least gone in a straight line to the edge and gone around in a circle to to prove the theory. To I prove the theory. Where Ex- excellent point. Find me someone that's even tried. The, the very question itself raises more questions, which is, yeah, lots of people have circled the, the, uh, the world at the equator. Find me someone that's done pole to pole. Uh, or I'll, I'll even use your the the sub thing because if you you caught any of the which stuff, I've been mean down to below. Yeah, well, we talked about above and we talked about on land, but you know, I mean, there is below. Yeah. Well, there's oh. below, and and it's really fascinating you mentioned that because over the last three, four weeks, I've had a series of people come forward, um, several from the military. One was a submarine electronics, a chief electronics technician, did 20 years on five different classes of subs. Uh, the other guy was a, a missile uh, a missile uh, instructor, master training specialist for the Sparrow Missile System. He's currently in. I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen to him if he keeps talking about it. But the submarine guy, he mentioned some. In fact, when I had both of them, not only did I have them on my on my show separately, but I had them both on a show together, comparing notes, and it was really t- interesting listening to them because one, the sub guy said, you know, in the twenty well, years, that is car- compartmentalized, and if they. If they're comparing, notes, yeah, I know, that might not be a good thing. It's probably not a good thing, but you know, who knows what's going to happen there? But the the submarine guy was saying, "Look, he goes, here's what's so interesting because this is a pretty social guy." He goes, "I've never even heard of anyone in the submarine biz, including myself, that ever say did a submarine mission below the equator." He goes, he goes, that struck me as odd. And then when they were comparing notes, they were say, I because I asked him on air, I said, look, is either, have either of you gone to Antarctica? Do you know anyone? And they go, that's really strange you'd mention that. Because there's not only have they did not know anyone that had done anything in Antarctica personally, but there's never a mission thing that comes up. You know, there's always opportunities. It's like, oh, you want to be stationed here. You want to be stationed here. And Antarctica never, ever comes up. And so they were kind of speculating on who exactly, what military branch actually runs the coastline of Antarctica. Because they can't, they can't even figure out a way that they could they themselves get stationed down there. And just more... You know, and the more guests I had on, you know, I talked to, you know, the missile instructor, the submarine electronics guy, a career surveyor, 32 years. He says he's never shot a curve in his life, uh, no matter how big a track of land he's ever done. Um, a flight instructor who owns his own flight, uh, flight training school, he says it's absolutely flat. Um, the industrial valve guy that I've, I'm doing this Tuesday who says the ISS cannot physically happen with the mechanical engineering stuff they're touting. But there, if any one of those people would have contradicted any one of the others, I would have said, yeah, maybe there's a problem there. But they're all saying the same thing, which is – and they're not even using my clues. Okay, there's, okay. So one of the questions that's coming in right now is, have you ever flown in a plane? And can you see the curve? No, you can't. And anyone that oh, here's yeah, that's a wonderful question. Thank you for bringing that up because I we've been hearing this since day one, since 2015. Which is they say, well, I fly all the time. I can see the curve. Really fine. Get your camera phone out. Take a picture of it. Go home. Throw it on your laptop, or your desktop, or whatever. 
take blow it up on your screen, get a ruler, a piece of paper, whatever the straight edge is, put it up to it, and tell me the curve's still there. And no one, I mean no one, has shown me a curve or shown anybody a curve. No one's emailed a picture of a curve anyway. And we know this because the weather balloons that have gone up to, you know, so the a commercial air traffic usually cruises about 35,000 feet. They cap out about 50,000 feet. Weather balloons go between 100 and 130,000 feet. We've got weather balloon shots, full-blown video that show no curve at all, none. But at the same time, if you look at the Red Bull video, and that had plenty of mainstream media coverage, that shows so much curve, it makes it impossible. And yeah, it's- I've, I've got to touch on that, that video, the Red Bull video, because even uh, Niels DeGrace, he talks about that video. He says yeah. that's only like maybe maybe if you were to take like an eighth of going above the planet, yeah. if in a glo- even in a globe standpoint, yeah. uh, it's only like an eighth of an inch. Yeah. Uh, so we we haven't even left the atmospheres, so no. to speak. No, but that, yet, so. but yet, all the fisheye lenses to use, and fisheye lens is an old <laughs> camera technology, shows oh, a yeah. curve. Yeah. So don't tell me you can see a curve at thirty five thousand feet because if a weather balloon doesn't show it at one hundred ten thousand feet, you're not. You're definitely not seeing it. And yes, oh yeah, to answer the question, yes, I, I did business travel for uh, five six years all across the country and some international. And, uh, yeah, I, I stared out I mean, a lot of planes. My question, okay, so I go back to this enclosure, because mm-hmm. the enclosed world actually makes a lot of sense, if you were to put it in perspective. I like yeah. to, I, I, every time I think of the enclosed world, I start thinking of the movie Star Wars, and I start thinking of the Death Star. Yeah. I, I don't know why, it's just, like, people are like, well, it can't be done. We just thought of it, we put it in a movie, so, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's not real to us, but, uh, I mean, if if I was an alien race trying to preserve my my people a lot in a a lot of ways if i was to compare this to a movie Mm -hmm. uh and i really want to try to refrain from doing that because if you start comparing stuff to movies then it becomes fiction i mean it's sure it's as simple as that that's usually what happens and and if you think of uh superman for example yeah. Uh, what did they do to him? They they shot him to Earth because their planet was dying. And yeah. I mean, so when people ask the question, why would we be in an enclosed Earth? What if they built this to protect us, their children? Not necessarily God. We call them God, but what if they're not? What if they're just ancestors that tried to save their own people, much like the movie The Village? Yeah, um, but much like the movie The Village. We, we could be... Uh, and I've said this a, a couple different ways, but think of, yeah, some people say, well, you know, are, are we like a box of kittens that we're just trying to be protected, you know, we're, that we're not ready for whatever's outside of this place? And I'll go even so far to say, or we could be a box full of baby scorpions. And that is, yeah, still kind of cuddly, but you don't want to let us get out and start running amok in every, everywhere because as a species, let's face it, uh, especially men, you know, we have done a lot of damage to each other. Uh, we 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 can be noble at times, and we you know if we can band together for things, yeah, we can do great See, things. You make me start thinking about the fifties and when we started seeing all the alien spacecraft. Now, my brother, he's he, I think he's your biggest critic now. Okay, um, so so <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I'm probably going to have you periodically on this show because I think that uh, there's a that, lot that eventually stuff. he'll end up talking to me. Yeah, he'll start talking to you. Yeah, he was kind of nervous about it before. I um, don't. I'm a really nice guy. You can yell all you want. I've heard it. So, <laughs> but but in the fifties, we had. Um, I know I was going to streamline this, but after we had the technical difficulty, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to throw all the questions at you. Sure. So, um, in the fifties, we had a bunch of uh, sightings, alien spacecraft. You yep, know, you I remember it. that. But that was also the time when we were doing the bomb testing and. And which brings me to the question: Were they there to repair, or were they there to abduct? Because a lot of people are like abduction, this abduction, that. And if you get too crazy with with uh, alien theory, then it, you just it goes insane. I mean, yeah. I you can get really deep into that. Um, but now that you're talking about this dome, and not mm-hmm. even just a flat Earth thing, you're speaking of dome. Yeah, I begin to wonder. Oh well, were they there to repair? Because see, some of the the sightings, like one of the one of the big sightings, was uh, over an air base in the uh, Midwest. And uh, what ended up happening was during the nuclear testing, this spacecraft literally went over the base. And you know, my brother's not really a big alien space guy. 
I, I really want him to see this video on on this particular uh, incident. Incident, because, yeah. Yeah, and the reason being is because this particular incident had um, all the uh, military commanders talking. You know, mm-hmm. they were interviewing. These people are all retired now, which which brings me to another question, but I'll get to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. Is um, They were talking about how this, this spacecraft went over the base and literally all their nuclear weapons shut down at the same time. Oh, I remember this one, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. but it brings to my mind... Now that we're talking about this, and now that you're really going to mess with my head, <laughs> um, were they there to repair the dome? The first thing you would do is shut down the ride when you're repairing a ride at Disney, uh, right? I, you know, that's not bad, and I don't think anyone, you, you were probably the first one to uh, to mention that. Yeah, it's possible. Uh, I don't know if our technology is good enough to break, well, it's obviously not good enough to break through, but you're right, damage it? Yeah, maybe. Uh, you know, we we. It seems that we've been trying to. You know, we, once we gave up with the atomic weapons. Well, if you take a car and hit it against a metal wall, I mean, you may not break through the wall, but you will damage the wall. Yeah, yeah, maybe even not significantly. You know, where it's and there real. was recently a people talking about a hole in the ozone. So, I mean, you know, if if you just go off of this theory alone, and you put yourself in this this shoe, you ask yourself. You know, now that I'm thinking back and looking back at some of the other stuff I've seen, and I do see a lot. I guess in a way, I, my brother says I am a conspiracy person. But sure. see, the stuff is the thing is, I don't really consider this stuff conspiracy because, well, there's there's facts and there's people that are in high places. I mean, you've even got the astronauts, which which I find real interesting. Buzz Aldrin was just recently in an interview and. He's reluctant to say whether or not they landed on the moon and stuff like that, but but you know he tries to avoid that stuff at all costs. Yeah. But when he starts talking, if you really listen to what he's saying, you know he talks about things that he sees when he's in the space shuttle that normal people don't see, and you begin to wonder: Are they repairing? Hmm. Or is that like a like a janitor crew or a, a maintenance crew? Yeah, yeah, and that is something that I, I had thought about because, yeah, it changes the aspect of you don't think of it anymore. It's like, oh, yeah, they're coming from distant they're planets. For me. Do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, no, they think you, I, I treat them. It's like, yeah, are they the janitors? Are they the maintenance team? Are they the superintendents? Um, they take a much more intimate feel um, and that they could be in here with us. You know, not only, you know, maybe they don't have the ability to get through it either. So if there is damage, uh, they will have to repair certain parts of it. Uh, okay, it's, so it's, then it's, I'm going to fall back on, on, on the moon landing and stuff. Well, what about this whole, the trip to Mars? And like I said, you know, we, I know we touched on it earlier, but I'm, I'm no. trying to remember if, if we yeah. actually got through it. No, we the, didn't. The Pluto, the Pluto um, incident. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you say about all this? I mean, that's kind of... Every, I know we've gone way over our limit, but I but that, That's okay. That's right. <laughs> uh, the, the Pluto... I'll, I'll do Pluto and Mars real quick. Pluto is, is... is There's no difference between the story on Pluto and the face on Mars and the weird, funny thing on Saturn. And that is, it doesn't matter if it's real or not in the long run, because... It's not about the story you're, you're watching on television. Every time you see a story like that, the big point is, is is reinforcing the globe. So it doesn't matter if you believe in the face on Mars. It's, oh, there's something on Mars. I don't necessarily buy it. Either way, I'm on a globe. Oh, yeah, funny-looking thing. Looks like kind of like Pluto, or at least they say it's Pluto. Either way, I'm on a globe. Saturn, globe. Everything keeps going back to the globe. You can't get away from it. And all the future stories they're talking about, making, taking a mission to Mars, never ever, ever, that's all caps underlined, ever going to happen. Because you, the, the detection ability of the internet to figure out mistakes, uh, and that, that goes with any movie, any piece of media anywhere, is going to look at any space program uh, in the future with a microscope. You can't, e- you wouldn't even begin to fake. Look, I would, even if they gave me an unlimited budget and the, the best people in the game to do it, I would not fake a, a mission to Mars because there's going to be mistakes made. Uh, you know, if anyone has any doubt, look at Avatar. Amazing effects, triple checked, everything. And there's still movie mistakes in it. And it's mostly a CGI movie. So. <laughs> And that's with our technology. And that's with our technology. 
Yeah. I can't imagine what kind of technology it would take to do something like this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly. But, well, okay. Oh, so. you mean you mean to to build a structure like this? And not as much as you might think. I mean, we can do if we were given enough money. If we were, you know, if they said make a planetarium a hundred miles wide and see if you can fool an entire town. Well, we want to do that when we go to Mars. Isn't that the whole idea behind the Mars missions? Right. Oh they yeah. Want to build a planetarium so that they can live on it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I would imagine it's yeah it's 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 only resources and time. If and once you build it, you don't have to build it again. It's not like they throw this place away. You know, as soon as it's done, you know they go through civilization after civilization. What happened to the Atlantean people? What happened to the people that built the pyramids? Okay. So my I've got okay. So here's a couple more questions. Okay. So if you now you're stating, and I just want to make this really clear for everyone that's actually <laughs> listening. All right. Okay. You're stating that we've never been in space. Never. Never. Ever. Ever. 100%. 100%. How do you explain GPS, uh, the internet, uh, how this show itself is being streamed across the globe right now? Okay. And, um, Wait, which part you want me to do first, GPS or the yeah, internet? Yeah, well, G- I'd imagine they're well, all they, one and the same. But, but they are pretty much the same. GPS, if you have any doubts, you got to have to watch the clues to see it. I dissect yeah, I G- In fact, I didn't even want to dissect GPS when, when I first looked at it. I was going, Boof, whatever. But when I got into GPS, look at the massive, the, the easiest things are the biggest things. And that is, look at the massive gaps in the southern hemisphere when it comes to air travel and by that i mean gps does not work in the southern hemisphere over the oceans I you can look at, on that. You, 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 can. You, you, you can look at it any any day you want the planes are not tracked if it's a global positioning system and by that i mean and i had the the flight instructor come on and give me some really great details on the gps system there's supposedly 24 satellites it's created by the dod that's the department of defense u.s military it should be blanket coverage over the entire globe it's called global positioning system and yet the south atlantic the south pacific the indian oceans your plane is not being tracked if you have any doubt okay, well, you can, what about ship movement Compensated, the, or is possibly using the Loran system. We were looking at that uh, with the submarine guy and the Navy guy, and that is the the old Loran system, which was tower based, seems to be still operational, and that's what they've always they, that's what they've always been using and running tons of fiber optic cable as far as the internet goes. They try to do as much tower stuff as they can, and if you're in a ship, get a member. You can you can counter you can compensate with software in a ship, but when it comes to you know. The GPS system is not there. It is not the. In fact, uh, the the Navy guy, the the one uh, guy who was doing the missile systems, he was really specific about saying, and the submarine guy was saying that GPS, even though it's a DoD system, is not their primary navigation tool when they're on the open seas. And I go, why not? He goes, because we just go by charts, and the charts are all wrong. That he he said that the charts absolutely the navigation is is wrong. Sometimes we'll show up to port days before we should be there. It doesn't make any sense. GPS is a backup system for them. Okay. And what about throwing a ball up and watching it hit the ground? Let's talk for a minute. Okay. What do you, what do you want to know? The, uh, well, the, pot- the potential. Uh, okay. okay, so based on the globe model, we spin through space at ungodly speeds. And yeah. if the world were ever to come to a screeching halt, we'd slam and turn into spaghetti. Sure. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, and that would explain why, you know, just... When you spin something, it will make it go down. It's, gra- it's a gravity force. What What do you say to that? I mean, it, well, first off, is the flat Earth even spinning? No, it's not. There is no. There is I no. Guess spin. That's the- you you can't you can't spin it. Well, you could if you wanted to, I suppose. Like okay, a record. I mean, even if you did. Well, yeah, exactly. Like, well, but, I mean, but even it, even Disney does it with one of their one of their restaurants. They slowly spin the thing. Yeah. So, if if you spin the flat Earth, the problem is, is you're going to run into detectable G-force, sideways G-force, the closer you get towards the edge. Uh, so, But you don't have to. So then the question is, what is gravity on a flat Earth? And then I come back and say, well, what's, flat, what's gravity on a ball? Is it just mass? Is it just density? Because on a flat Earth, you could still use density or you could use – my favorite is the stuff that we've been using in the gaming world for about 11 years now, which is a, really a form of molecular magnetism, a magnet that can pull everything, including organics. That, that's all. That's on a magnet. 
Well, I, I, but well. but as far as the the spinning of the Earth goes, uh, there's a couple tests that people and I don't like to use the plane one as much because I think the gravity one's better. And that is, look, if the Earth is spinning, if you're at the equator, you're supposedly spinning at about 1,100 miles an hour. Let's say it's between 1,000 and 1,100. I'm going to round up to 1,100. Yeah, but, those numbers are astronomical. It's really hard to. Yeah. To, to put if, them into perspective, that's but, which I find if, interesting too, because the average person, and I don't mean to cut you off, the average no, person okay. has a hard time comprehending these numbers, and which, they know that. Which is why most of the time I won't use them. It's not because I'm trying to get out of anything. It's because I don't want to get anyone to glaze over. Uh, so I will use really small numbers. Like uh, it's the deepest hole we've ever drilled ever in the world. Uh, it's only eight miles. People can get that. Or if your metric is twelve kilometers, but if the Earth is spinning a thousand miles at the equator, and that's kind of a big number, but if you're at the North Pole or South Pole, depending on your member, if it's a globe, then you're spinning at zero miles an hour. It's no different than a merry-go-round. If you're on a merry-go-round, you're on the edge, you're feeling it, but if you're staying in the center, it's perfectly sunny skies, you're just turning in a circle and nothing's happening to you. The problem is this, and that is centrifugal force says... Like a merry-go-round, merry-go-round tries to throw you off, but if you're in the center, it doesn't try to do anything. So... At the equator, centrifugal force should be trying ever so slightly. It's not like you're going to be flying into space, but it should be trying to push you off. It should be trying to counteract gravity if it's a globe. If that's the case, then if something weighs, let's say, 100 pounds at the North Pole, it should weigh slightly less at the equator. That's one of the tests if I ever you know, get this thing going even further. That's what I'm going to try to do. It's like, look, the gravity cannot be the same in these two places. It may not be 10 pounds. It may not even be a pound, but it's going to be measurable. We have the ability to do this. Oh, I know See? where you're going with this you're talking about one of those when you were eight years old and you would get on that little spinny thing at the park you'd have yeah. everybody spin you if you were yep. on the outer edge man you flew off the thing exactly now granted on a globe it's very very slow it's 1100 miles an hour but it still takes 24 hours to do a full revolution but it's still centrifugal force it still exists we know that part of physics works so that is one of those little tests out there that, that no one will answer. I mean, the plain one going back and forth east to west, that's a different one. Okay, well, what about... Hit me. What do you got? <laughs> yeah. I've heard them. Well, I'm, I'm running out of questions, man. I'm running <laughs> out. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've, we've done this. All your, bro- all your brother. Billy, give me stuff. No. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I'm right, not. Right, I'm about not now, right about now, he's texting. Oh, just give me I'm not picking on Billy. Uh, the uh, uh, he's uh, look. It's it's. I know. Look, people don't. There's a. There's some people that really get angry about this. The forum well, post. That was the next step was okay. So, what do you think about when people? Why do they think they get so upset? I mean, I because mean, I'm a pretty open guy. I like. I like. Well, that's just it. In fact, there was somebody, it wasn't me, it was another guy that says, fine, you think you're open-minded? Here's something for you. It's called Flat Earth Spray. I'm going to hit you in the face with it. And what, you know, that'll let you know if you're really open-minded or not. But well, the I reason- do find it interesting. I do find it interesting that NASA is the only, I mean, we, if you think about it, our government's a gob, uh, cover-up. Uh, yeah. You know, we can go into conspiracy theories all day and night. But yeah. the, the fact of the matter remains that... NASA is a government agency, and uh, it's it is about the only thing that's gone into space. Yeah, and, it's and, it was, you know it's a very few amount of people that you can get information and answers from, and if they don't want to tell you those answers, there you're not going to get them. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's. But from people, what I've, what I've got about that, which brings you're me right, to my next question to you. Sure, sure. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to hit you with another one. Whoa, one please, please what do you got? All right. <laughs> With all of this time and all of these people and everything that's going on, I want to know why there hasn't been a whistleblower. Why, in your mind, do you think not one person, not one out of the ent- I mean, we got Bradley Manning talking about the military. You got that yeah. other guy, Snowden, who's like, NSA is watching you. Ha-ha. But you don't see, not once, anything about Flat Earth. You don't... Um- I mean, there's there's two there's There's no 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 there's there's two parts to this one is uh the whistleblowers didn't even know they could come out until a few months ago because i mean i put a clue out literally saying look if you know anything about anything please you know come forward but to answer your question why aren't they like you know the other people like snowden and bradley and and uh, and that is because it's you know that's just NSA stuff you know that's just well, I, well, those, no, those are- I mean I, I get that but but what I'm saying is if something's big enough and it's like I was talking to my 
my woman about this. I think I was even touching on it with my brother. Yeah. Um, the thing is, when something's big enough, um, I don't think... it. Okay, if I knew a secret, yeah, that would detrimentally change the world. Yeah. The way... It, I mean, this would. I mean, let's face it. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about religion. If God appeared in front of everybody, it'd scare the shit out of everyone. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, who when, who exactly when, let's let's say you knew who exactly let's say I knew let's yeah. say let's just just off chance you know let's say you work as a subcontractor for NASA and you knew somebody who knew somebody you know what you know what I'm the host of this show you are supposed to answer these questions <laughs> well no no, no 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 I gotta, I, okay, I gotta bounce no. this package because because uh, okay, no, my, my question to you is, is a question it, or my answer is a question which is who would you tell Exactly. Who are you gonna go you to? Go to. Uh, I'll use. Uh, if you ever remember, you're probably not old, or maybe you're old enough to remember Capricorn uh, One. Remember? remember uh, Cap- it sound well. That sounds familiar, and you touched on that. I didn't actually see that one. Where? I mean, where? There was a couple that I wanted to actually go see because of this. Where there was a um, a NASA employee. Basically, the the whole move, the whole po- point of Capricorn One. If anyone hasn't seen a 1978 movie, it's never going to get remade. I trust trust me when I say this, which shows you basically Not because st- of you. No, no, no. But it tells you step by step on how to fake a space mission, and they did a fake space mission to Mars. And one of the NASA guys figured out that the telemetry was wrong. He's going, "This signal is not coming from Mars. It's coming from somewhere in the desert, like a couple hundred miles away." And he tells his reporter friend, "Right, that guy." is gone by morning i mean you don't even know what happened to him he is like in the scene and they replace his condo they move in somebody into his condo they change the labels on all the magazines it's like he never existed ever in a million years and then they keep trying to kill the reporter of course you know they would have killed him in real life but the point is who if you were a whistleblower who would you and this tell? Is something that my brother could relate to because uh, he there was an article on a guy who invented an engine based on water. Yeah, I don't know if you ran into that guy, but I, I, I know. At, yeah. In the late seventies, he had yeah, developed the engine to go into water or to uh, to run off of water, and uh, the government was all over him. Like they uh, they sent a general to his house, and then yeah. within a few weeks of that general being at his house. He ended up missing. Yeah. Or oh, I yeah. think he ended they, up dead. I can't remember. The famous the famous analogy I try to give people is, look, they will offer you the carrot and the stick, usually at the same time. And they'll say, look, here is a dump truck full of money or a gun. You choose. And most people, you so know. So when I see you living in a mansion or I read on the news, <laughs> you're dead. I know exactly what happened. Oh, there you go. And I, I know I've gone online. I said, look, you're not going to be able to, oh. to. I mean, I, I never married. I never had a family. So it's it's easier for me to say that. But but the, as far as the whistleblower goes, no, I'm asking. And the people that have come forward in the last three weeks have been brilliant. You know, to uh, three separate guys from the United States military um, in both Army and Navy. Um, uh, career surveyor, the the uh, the flight instructor, and that's just in three weeks. I don't you know, know who's- and that's what I want to touch on to to recap towards the end of this. Um, yeah. I want to touch on some of your sources. I mean, obviously, I don't want to get anyone in trouble, and I don't. Well, no, no, they're a black they're too- coat shooting me in the back of the head. So no, one of them <laughs> actually one of them's actually come straight out. He's he said no, this is my name. Here's and okay, he sent so, videos. Well, yeah, I just I've, I'm curious to know like what kind of sources you have, and and furthermore, what kind of I, I want to say proof. I mean, I don't know like evidence. Sure, uh, sure. I can I can do have it. yes. What do you? What do we have? What is re- it that convinces you that this is real and that it should be taken seriously? Because I know, like people like my brother, would be like, "No, I ain't gonna look into that." <laughs> well, but, that's just. But it. he if, is interested now because of the way that you're presenting it all. The sources, yeah. and for for me, I was convinced even before these guys came forward. They're just reinforcement for me and people that I can show to other people and say, look, if you want, because these are the guys that are shutting up the debunkers one by one, uh, because you have to be, in order for a debunker to really work, you've got to be on the same level as where the source is coming from. So the first guy that called me, and I didn't solicit any of these people, first guy that contacted me was a um, current 
active uh, United States Navy Sparrow NATO Sparrow missile system instructor. He'd been in 10 years. He's trying to go career. We'll see how that goes. And he came forward and says, look, um, during my last five-year tour, and, and he works with long-range, or I'm sorry, medium-range missile systems. And he says, look, all the instruments that we use, and we get to use stuff that the average civilian has no access to, we're using you know, like two-inch beam-focused um, radar and uh, you know, heavy, heavy electronics. He's going, nothing that we use should be able to do what it does if it's a ball earth. Like, for example, he can paint targets at 50 miles with a uh, 50 nautical miles which is what 65 statute miles something like that uh with a two inch beam uh two inch radar beam and he's going with a if the curvature is out there at that far there's no way you should be able to hit it it should just dive into the water and you, you know you'll you'll never hit this thing and that beam never never gets there the coriolis effect which is the earth spinning is never factored into any firing solution ever not just on his weapon system but any weapon system and the submarine guy confirmed that um, not only that, but the gyro system, which was fascinating, and we're still trying to, we're still digging into this one. The gyro system, which is used on submarines, on ships, on planes, <clears throat> that is creates an artificial flat plane reference point that does not deviate and does not change. But that can't be possible if you're flying over the curvature of the Earth. If that was the case, that flat plane would keep pulling you up, and the submarines would just keep surfacing, and airplanes would just keep getting so high that their engines would fail. These things, it's, it's, and combine that with the, um, so, I'm sorry, so the missile guy was the first guy that came out. Then the surveyor, the career surveyor, 32 years, came out and says, look, Everything that we are taught on how to do, it immediately starts with the assumption, and that is when you're shooting big tracks of land, just assume that it's a flat plane. And he's going, but that doesn't make sense because eventually, if my flat plane lines up with your flat plane, and my analogy is that if you're trying to cover a basketball by gluing wheat thins onto it, those little square crackers, yeah, you can cover it, but there's going to be gaps. You can't cover a, surf, a curved surface with nothing but flat planes. Sooner or later, you got to deal with the curve. And the surveyor said it didn't happen. Submarine guy comes on and says, yeah, my gyroscope works the same way as an airplane does. And we use a flat world. Our, all our courses are plotted flat. The f- torpedoes, the firing solutions, never take into account the Coriolis effect. They always fire flat. Um, and then finally, the guy just ahead on last Tuesday... Uh, he was the flight instructor, you know, the, the guy that owned his own flight training school. And he goes, absolutely right. The gyro system, the Navy's guy said, are dead on. He's going, the plane works on this gyro system. He's going, I'm up there every single day. And it is not. He goes, it's all based on a flat plane. You set the gyro when you're on the ground to be flat. So what basically they're all saying is, he goes, they're all saying the weird thing. They're all saying, look, we've heard about the curve in textbooks. That's what you hear about. But it's like a paragraph here and there. But no one actually uses the curve in the real world. They, it's, it's like a, just a, it's like a side, it's like a footnote somewhere. But the, the real curve, everyone in their nine to five jobs that has to deal with this stuff, it doesn't exist. And no one seems to, and everyone misses it because no one, there's no conflict there. Meaning if you take off in Dallas and land in New York, and you get there, if you get from point A to point B, everybody lands, everybody's happy. No one questions it. No one catches the curve. He and all his pilot friends, he's starting to bring him up to, no one can rebuttal him, which is where we are next, uh, which is no one, you, you want to try to debunk this now? Fine. You're going to have to get a, you know someone in the military or higher than these guys to say, oh, yeah, by the way, he's wrong about the gyro. He's wrong about the radar. He's wrong about the navigation. Uh, you know, all these things. And here's why. Good luck trying to form an argument there. Yeah, so it's not going to happen. No. And that's that's all that's happened in the last three weeks. It's I, I don't even know where it's going next. So if you're asking about whistleblowers, <laughs> I ha- I'm half expected to get an astronomer to call me up tomorrow and say, oh, yeah, by the way. <laughs> okay. Well, look, um, I know we've gone way over our time. I'm <laughs> so I, I sorry. Super interesting. So, which is perfectly fine. I'll, I'll probably have you on again one more time. Okay. Um, to you know, clarify for anyone else that hasn't. Whenever, been. if I can patch this one up, I'll do it. If not, I, I would like to uh, like rerun it through. I'm one of those guys that you've got to do things over and over again. Got to beat me in the head with the rock. Oh no, so it's I, totally fine. It all man. sinks Re- in. So rep- repetition uh, is the key. Yeah, that that is, and 
Uh, I guess my next question to you is, is, is there anything else that you want to add? And, Billy, I know you're listening, and I know you've uh, got questions for him. So if you have any questions for him, now's the time. Uh, oh, I think he wrote one. Hold on. What I try to tell people is, look, everyone abs- everyone's absorption period of this is different. No one's going to get this in a day. Yeah, every once in a while you'll run. If you don't laugh at, at this the first time, if you don't roll your eyes, if you don't ridicule it, then there's probably something wrong with you. Because it you're conditioned trust me when i say this you are conditioned since you were a child it is the only thing we debunk to children and that is we put a globe in their classroom and we let them run with it and and that never changes so some people will get this in a few days other people take a few weeks and i've seen it again and again on youtube they'll make videos they'll say i hate flat earth i hate flat earth i flat flat earth and then by the fourth video it's all of a sudden you know what i like flat earth no, there's no middle of the road thing. It's like love, well, love. That's the thing. Is I don't think that this is something that you would want to like. I mean, this is something that. I mean, this is a life changing event. Oh yeah. And if it yeah. is real, and it is, I mean, again, I mean, you've got, you've got me thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It. it yeah. It, uh, look, so. it, it. I. I. I just tell. Just, what I try to tell everybody is look. Just take it slow. Don't. And I know it's easy for me to say because I get so many emails saying, "Look, I haven't slept in four days. I'm Thanks still watching." Lot. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's good, but no. But I haven't got any death threats. People, I'm going to hunt you down because it's this weird, humbling. <laughs> It's it's like a great street magic trick that got. Well, every- I, in all honesty, what are you going to do to change it now? I mean, if it is something that is in place, it's going to be in place even after you go to sleep tonight. Exactly. I mean, there's nothing to worry about. It's not like it's going to change but, the course of anything that's going on. But so. people people treat it as this wonderful, fresh, new thing. I'm going. Are you kidding? Us? This is the oldest trick in the book. But nobody. Hey, well, it is. It technically is because before Copernicus, yeah. in the 1700s. Yeah, which brings yep. me. Um, well, okay, so, um, okay, so here it is. Uh, he has a question. It is, how could you keep the rulers and kings and presidents on board with keeping this a secret? I mean, with everyone fighting. I mean, that's like you know, even Russia. You know, uh, you. Got oh, you mean who, Russia who, who, and the who? United States? They hate each other. So why? Why would if we wanted to keep it on board, Russia wouldn't. You know, they would want to be against us. So it's I mean, it's the ultimate secret at the highest levels. Uh, you th- you talk about compartmentalization. You don't want not uh, so very few people know the big picture. Even the astronauts now don't know anything. I mean, yeah, the Apollo astronauts knew, and that's why they got depressed and crawled into bottles and became recluses. But everybody which else now. My next question: Talk about that one movie that you were talking about. Cause, oh, you know, oh, astronauts gone and, wild. And, yeah, y- yeah. There, there, Billy, there, there is. I know you're listening, so there is a. Uh, a movie out there um, called there's, Astronauts there, Gone Wild. Yeah, there was a documentary made uh, by, I think it was Bart Siebel, uh, which was, he was a kind of an irritating reporter that went out and tried to get people, he, he didn't believe in the moon missions, but he tried to ambush uh, astronauts and try to, I like, like this. You know what, you were talking about, <laughs> oh, not to cut you off, but no, you okay. were talking about all this government crap an hour ago. Right, so we've been yeah. doing this for almost two hours now, and yeah. an hour ago is when I got cut off, and the entire show like collapsed. Right, <laughs> but now that everything's back up and running smoothly, and it's yeah. running fine, yeah, you know, I, it's <laughs> which may it begs the question. I mean, all it is is a switch on the internet. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah. I know I have all these programs and everything running smoothly, which is why it sounds so clear and things are great, but. Uh, yeah. It makes me wonder. I mean, it seriously makes me wonder. Are you touching a nerve with them? Oh, no doubt. Uh, this movement, and that also show you how big it is. Because you guys, people can talk about World Trade Center and Sandy Hook and Boston bombing and all that stuff all day long. The, nobody on the other end is going to move any pieces around. But as far as the chessboard goes. But with this thing... You move the chessboard, we have a problem. Yeah, there. Yeah, things are things are actually happening now. Sorry. But uh, I'm sorry to 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 get back to the astronauts thing. There was a yeah, there was a little please. documentary where this irritating reporter was trying to ambush uh, astronauts and kind of ask them a whole bunch. Of, you're talking documentary. You're not talking documentary. A small radio show like this or like yours. You're talking a flat out yeah, sponsored full blown, documentary. Full blown documentary. 
And where he was trying to, he figured if he could ask the astronauts enough fast, rapid fire questions, he could trip them up, right? But he, what he did was was interesting, and it and it worked for him. But he didn't know what he was on to at the time, which was he brought a Bible with him, and he says, "Oh yeah." Sometime during the interview, he says, "Oh yeah." By the way, will you swear on this Bible that you went to the moon? He thought he'd catch him off guard with that, and and that you know that would work. The problem was is the astronauts didn't want to do it. They didn't want to swear in the Bible, and that part bugged me, because I remember watching that documentary, and I felt bad for the astronauts, because they were older, but it bugged me. It's like, why wouldn't they put their hands in the Bible? Why wouldn't they swear in the Bible they went to the moon? I mean, people lie under oath all the time. It's called perjury. We have an extensive system that deals with perjury. So why not just do it, right? You lied about the Apollo program. You know, you went up there, did all these fun things. Why not just, why not just swear that you didn't, you know, that you went, right? You know, one more lie, right? And then it hit me. It's like, well, what if, you know, if, if you were an Apollo astronaut and you were told not only that you were faking it, but here's the reason why you were faking it, well, that leads you down a whole other path. It's sort of down the spiritual path, which is, well, let's say this place is an enclosed system, you know, and there is somebody well, that would destroy religion all over. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, people are looking over your shoulder, so or some, something is looking over your shoulder. Are you really going to... You really going to lie under oath? Because now you don't know, because now the Bible or whatever religious book you're talking about takes on a whole nother meaning, whole nother dimension. And that, because it bugged me, because I was going, it was like, what, all these guys are super strong Christians, they just won't lie? Doesn't make sense. I know plenty of Christians that lie. They do it every day. Don't give me that. But these guys wouldn't. I was going, well, maybe because they're Boy Scouts or Eagle Scouts. No, that wasn't it either. You look in their backstories. They weren't Scouts by any stretch. And that's... <laughs> That's when I sort of knew I was going. Then it started clicking, and of course that was one of my later clues anyway. But that's when I started realizing the the ramifications of what would happen here. And that is, if we did find out we were an enclosed world, would we become better as a civilization? And I think we would, because we we then become accountable. It's not that somebody's hanging over our heads with a scorecard, you know, watching everything we do, but we're actually looking at ourselves. We're looking in our in a, in a mirror and saying, "Okay, this thing that I'm thinking about doing, do I still really want to do that?" And yeah, it was it was interesting. It was the only conspiracy, if you want to call it a conspiracy, or the only theory that could actually benefit our civilization. Meaning the enclosed world, the flatter world, changes not just where we live, but how we think. And, uh, yeah, so I tried to go the silver lining with it and, uh, and, and go down that road. And, and, yeah, I think we'd be better as a people. I think it would, it would, we'd become one family, and, and I think a lot of the bad things that happen in our world wouldn't happen anymore. Well, okay, so if you were to say anything to the round earthers or the... Spheroidal. Uh, we'll call them. We'll call them. We'll, how, whatever how about, you want to call them. Globalists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Looking up the scientific term is is oh god, that's yeah. getting me tongue tied just talking. Okay, yeah. so what would you say to people who believe that the Earth is round? I mean, how how would Ask, you convince them? I mean, con- convincing I, them in in one show, you're not going to do it, but. How I would convince them is say, look, if you want to put – because really, anyone that's trying to convince somebody else, all you have to do is put it in their head, uh, much like the, uh, the seed concept in um, uh, Inception with Leonardo DiCaprio, which is just get them to ask the question themselves. And once the question's asked, it'll just start echoing back and forth until it drives them nuts, which is how do you know it's a globe? Because and, – and I mean that literally, meaning how do you know? Do you know because – you just think you know because yeah duh we know like gravity or water or, or fire you know we know these things or do you know because somebody told you and if you somebody told you who was it the follow up to that is tell me how you know it's a globe without using the word nasa think real hard about that because you're not going to be able to do it and then then the question comes okay maybe you can trust nasa Maybe, you know, you have enough faith in NASA. Yeah, fine, the United States organization, but they are also our military. But would the military ever lie to you about something? If they found out it wasn't a globe. Because remember, this trick is so big that even the, even the powers that be didn't figure it out. You know, they, they had to, you know, run into it. If they figured it out, would they tell you? And, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, I guess that pretty much answers all the questions. Okay. All right, so... <laughs> Listen, um, 
I think what I'll do, because I'd like to have you back. Um, yeah, whatever. Is what we'll do is we'll touch on things more specifically. I know this was all in general and a lot of bombardment. Sure. But, like, uh, next time we have you, we'll probably talk about Admiral Byrd. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Specifically. Um, take, I, I kind of wanted to get a feel, and, and since, again, it kind of collapsed in the middle of it, I, I want to... Uh, I, I just want to touch on some of this stuff, and I know I'll have a lot more questions later on. In fact, cool. my uh, my brother here, he has flat out said he will call. Flat so, uh, out said, <laughs> nice play on words there. Yeah, you like you like that? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah. If, so, you know, can I, can I can I plug the website real quick? Uh, yeah, go ahead and uh, give us your website. And you said you have a show that I'd like to uh, to go ahead and announce. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, well, the website is called, and I remember, uh, you know, I, you know, flat Earth is not what you want to lead with. The website is called enclosedworld.com. And uh, and from there, you can you can either go there, or you can go to Truth Frequency Radio, and uh, the show is called Strange World. And that's where I've got all the guests. And, uh, you know, again, you, know, you don't have to look at just my stuff. Just Google or go on YouTube and type in Flat Earth. Set the filter to this year and see what happens. You'll never get through them. You know, it, there's a lot out there, but there's a lot of good stuff. Well, you know what? I have one other question for you, then. What about the Google Earth? I mean, it is a satellite, and what do you think about that? No, it's simulated. I mean, how would you ex- uh, it's, it, Google Earth is just a computer-generated image. That's all it is. It's composite. Um, it was law. It was you know from literally from 1972 until July of 2015. There were there was only one claimed photo of the Earth from space, and that was from 1972 uh, Apollo 17. And they waited literally until the last the last trip home until they took the picture, and that was the only one they had around school books. No, Google Earth is just a, a series of composite images. It is not an image of any. Uh, you know, at close range, yeah. But once you back out to a certain point, it is nothing but composites. All right, I can see that. All right. Um, so, again, thanks for being on the show.